Y'all, we are going to see the dead raised to life. I am completely believing for it. I have no doubt that salvation, healing, deliverance will occur. And I am just contending for resurrection as well. The home where I'm living is with foster care young adults. They're about 18 to 24 and they are in serious life crises from their entire life and they're working and transitioning into freedom and adulthood and I get to be there as a volunteer. Someone who's not restricted to share the love of Jesus, to find out more about the inner workings of their heart and their life and I cherish this time. It is difficult, it is frustrating, it is painful, it is spiritually dark, but then there's also these beautiful glimpses of light, these glimpses where a client says, I'm about to be homeless, what do I do? I don't know what to do, will you pray for me? And I just relish these times. As I mentioned in my email, I am living with CSAC placements and this is my second placement that I have now, and it's a very difficult one. She leaves a lot. She experiences a lot of pain, hurt, addiction, um, struggles that I know very little about. But I know Jesus has a plan and a purpose for her life. And regardless of how anyone treats her, how she even views herself, I'm believing for her total redemption, her total freedom, and rescue through Jesus. I've had some incredible opportunities to spend time with my best friend Erin and her to hear about what's going on in her life, to encourage her, to give her hope, to pray for her. We go to the beach, have ice cream parties, go to the petting zoo, have dinner at, with Erin and her husband Greg, and just really able to instill this effort um, that is totally not in vain, that we know will bring um, total restoration in its proper time. I've had moments where she comes home not in a really good place at all, a really bad place, and I'm able to meet with her in her, in her sorrow and her frustration to feed her food, give her water, so providing for these basic like Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which often traffickers will um, use as a way of force, fraud, and coercion. And I'm just able to bring this, like, you're safe, you are home, your basic needs are provided for, but also you are valued and you have a choice. You do not have to live in this lifestyle. Come into family, come into community, choose to make life-giving choices. And I've seen some radical breakthrough where it feels like two steps forward, three steps back, seven steps sideways, two steps forward. I can get frustrated um, in the process, but I know that it's God's process with her. And um, yeah, I had a beautiful evening with my roommate where I just had this incredible, powerful moment of saying like, you have the choice between life and blessings or death and curses. And it's up to you to decide who you're partnering with in your life. Are these people that are giving to me or taking from me? And what does it look like to step into the opportunities that this program with Family Care is offering her with other programs that are available and resources for her? And I just know that like, when she makes that final choice, like, it is actually going to be raising her from the dead. I know that it sounds like, well, she's physically alive, but if you were to sit with her, you would understand that all of our prayers contending for her life is really a resurrection process. And um, yeah, I had this beautiful like wake up moment with her, and an hour later, she came to my room in fear, knocking on my door saying, um, there's a dark presence and it's lay it's been laying on my bed Crushing me and pushing me into the bed. I couldn't speak I was trying to scream for help to you and I wasn't able to open my mouth and I immediately was like, oh Get out of here Satan. You have no authority here So I prayed over her room anointed it with oil 
And I was like, let's just get out of your room. Like, it's a mess. Let's spend some time on the couch. You can sleep there. And um, got to have this awesome opportunity where I asked her, you know, if you were to die tonight, do you know if you'd go to heaven or hell? And she said, I don't know that I could know that. I don't know anyone could. And I said, well, I know it. I know that when I'm not on earth, that I'll be in the presence of God. And I'm so excited about it. Death does not become something worthy of fear, but it comes some, becomes something that is so exciting. And I asked her if she knew that Jesus, who Jesus was. And she said, oh, I think he's the son of God or something. And I just briefly explained the Trinity, but I was like, you don't have to fully understand it. It's more just believing that Jesus is God, that he died for you, that he washes away all of your sins. And um, she's just been exploring her faith and what she believes. And she last she had said was, I think I finally landed on Christianity. Um, and so there was totally this like long standing dialogue, um, you know, inviting her to church, inviting her to be part of our everyday family at my church. And um, yeah, I asked if she wanted to give her life to Jesus and to be filled with his spirit. And she said, yes, I want to, um, but I don't know how. It sounds like it might be really complicated. And I said, it's actually super easy. And I led her through the prayer of salvation, just confessing she was a sinner and believing that Jesus is God and he died to take that place for her and that she can be in relationship with God. And then asking to be filled with the Holy Spirit, his peace, his joy, his love. And in that moment of praying, she was just like repeating after me and her face just lit up with so much joy and giggling. And she was just in a completely different place than she was before. And I spent some time reading John 15 over her life and just explaining that God's gonna prune some branches and it may feel like death or major cutting, but when he removes these toxic relationships, he's going to bring great fruit from that. And so, um, yeah, she just slept in so much peace like she hadn't before. Um, so my frustrations can come of like, there's salvation. Oh, I also prayed for her to be healed. Um, any scars or um, mental status that's not um, the mind of Christ, which is a sound mind, which she has, you know. So my frustration can come when things don't look the way I hope they would, as quickly as I hope they would, but I know that God is in a process, and just even at church today, just contending that I'm going to see her raised from the dead in this life, not in resurrection life, but now, and I know that God can do it, and I have faith for it, and I just covet your prayers that you will just lift up my roommate whether she's here or somewhere else that like God is going to meet her and I know that nothing happens without prayer and I just ask that you um, cover her cover all of my clients cover all of the <laughs> foster care young adults in this entire nation they're in a war they're in a battle and they don't know how to adequately fight um, without putting on the armor of God because the assignment is real I see it every day but I also see some incredible breakthroughs and incredible victories and man when they just give their life to the Lord it just there's nothing like it they're added to my forever family so I just thank you for praying with me um, as I live with these foster care young adults